The Dutch Caribbean Nature Alliance is a regional network between the six islands of Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao, Ceiba, St. Eustatius, and St. Martin. Together, we work to preserve the unique nature of our islands. In this program, Safeguarding Nature Projects, we will be visiting four projects where we will be seeing people maintaining and preserving the nature of our island on Ceiba. These projects of the public entity of Ceiba working in collaboration with local organizations has been funded by the Ministry of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality. We will be looking at the importance and results of these projects. Good afternoon, how good are you doing afternoon. today? I'm doing all right, you? I'm good, thanks. Okay, I came to see the, your horticultural uh, project. Uh, yeah. Can you, for example, just show Would me you around? Like to come see it? Yeah. Yes, I can give you a short tour of the farm and let you know all of the stuff we're, we're growing over here. That would be great. Um, in this area close by us, we're growing tanyas. Uh -huh. And these are seasoning peppers that people use to cook with. Uh -huh. And if you look over in that the direction, thyme. yeah, we have some thyme growing. Mm -hmm. And in the lower area, I can show you, we grow some corn, cabbage. Is this what happens with the funding? Or? Yes, the funding was used to um, clear the land first. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this had grown up into trees because okay. it hasn't been used for a long time. Mm -hmm. So we came here with a crew of men um, that works with the government. Yeah. And we cleared all of it, we got it ready to farm, and then we fenced all of it to keep the goats out. Okay. So all here is all sweet potato? Yeah, this area is sweet potato. And if you look over there, you can see some more cassava. Uh -huh. Okay. And we have some sweet potato up here too. Could you explain us the importance of it? Um, well, at the moment, as you may have noticed, the majority of food that comes to say about it has to be imported. Mm -hmm. um, so our hope is that once we can continue growing more food like this locally, uh -huh. we can cut back on the imports. Uh -huh. And when it's grown locally like this, we, we don't use a lot of pesticides or uh -huh. chemicals like big farms use. Exactly. So it's a better price and it's a better quality. Yeah. Um, and also if you think about it, when we cut this on one day and take it to the shop the next day, it's, it's fresher because it just came off the farm. Okay, uh, as I remember, say we used to have a lot of uh, farmers, yeah. right? Yeah, there's only a handful of older guys that, that do this now. Yeah, okay. Um, why do you think it, it got lost? Why um, did it? Many years ago, um, there wasn't as much food available as you see now in grocery stores. Yeah. And there wasn't as many jobs available. Okay. Um, once there became more jobs available on the island and there's more tourism, they also started the oil refineries into Curaçao and Aruba. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they slowly shifted away from agriculture to get full-time jobs yeah. because it was show of money at the end of every month. Yeah. And that led to the decline of our agriculture and Seba. So now our task is to try to change back people's um, mentality, change back the culture. And convince And them. convince people that, that farming is possible and get them to start their own backyard gardening, make more gardens available and safer. the mount scenery for a short while. Uh, what do you think are the improvements? The improvement to mount scenery was yes. we, um, some of the steps was very high, so we added steps in between that they're oh. not that high, uh -huh. and also repair steps. 
We also added a railing to the top um, because it's, the steepest part is to the top of Mount Scenery. So we have a side railing that hikers can hold on going up and oh, especially now coming railings. down. Yeah, it's a railing. We also have a, um, a new rest shelter three quarter of the way up that if it's raining, or people can take a rest inside the shelter. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. It makes a difference in safety wise for the hikers, especially with the railing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what do you like most about Mount Scenery? Um, the cloud forest, I love the cloud forest. You're, you're scoped in the clouds most of the time. Um, hikers got to be lucky to see a viewpoint on the top. That is, we're at cloud height, yeah. 870 is... meters high we are. Say about, I would say, um, both is the number one in the Dutch kingdom of flora and fauna. Mm -hmm. And we're the highest in the Dutch kingdom, that's why I like to hike to the top uh, yeah. of Mount Scenery. Okay, uh, I think sometime you told me that there's about 700 different species, right? Probably over 700 different species of um, plants on Seba. Comparison to the size of Seba, mm -hmm. five square miles, 870 meters high, mm -hmm. there's more flora and fauna here than any part of the Caribbean of the world for the size of the island. Mm -hmm. For a five square mile island, that's really amazing. <laughs> that's amazing, yeah. Wow. Huh? Seba racer, black racer, brown racer. In Seychelles, they call him the red belly racer. Very relaxed. But it doesn't bite, right? Well, if you try to get your hand in the <laughs> anywhere around the head, it probably would bite, yeah. But it's, the teeth is so small and fine that it wouldn't do you any damage. Okay. Okay, he's not going to do you anything, just down for you. <laughs> Yumi. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, um, I am told that you're doing research. Could you explain what your research is all about? That's correct. Um, we're doing research together with Wagenia Marine Research. Mm -hmm. And today we've been working on the marine mammals. Okay. And we try to track them down or identify their presence on the Seba Bank with mm -hmm. the hydrophones that we're going to be placing in the water. Okay. How does that work? So basically we have a hydrophone, which stands for a microphone that you can put in the water, which is water resistant, uh -huh. uh, waterproof actually. And those go for half a year in the water and they will record continuously um, the presence of anything such as um, marine mammals being dolphins and whales, okay. as well as fish. Uh -huh. um, we analyze any uh, frequency, so any sounds that are recorded by the hydrophone, and depending on the frequency and also the different um, sounds, we can identify which species are actually around the Sabre Bank. a whole team working together to place the hydrophone that I talked earlier about. Uh -huh. And here you can see us working on a mooring block that was placed a couple years ago with the help of the Dutch Marines. Uh -huh. That one's been sitting there now for a while and every time we go back to the same spot to place the hydrophone. Uh -huh. And the hydrophone here is brought down with two um, concrete buckets. Uh -huh. Those act as a way to bring it all the way down because the yellow thing that you'll see later those are all floats buoys okay so we so need two concrete works buckets as an anchor yeah works as an anchor as weights to bring it down and here we're placing zip ties with rubber on the mooring pin because it's made out of metal and if you place two metals together and it starts banging oh, it so will influence yeah. the recording of the hydrophone 
Uh, can you explain to me what is the importance of the project for the island of Seba? So since 2015, uh, Seba has been established as the Yarari Sanctuary, which stands for the Marine Mammals and Shark Sanctuary. Okay. And for us, that's kind of a top priority to know which marine mammals and sharks are actually present on the Seba Bank. And that's what this research is contributing to. Uh -huh. By getting more tourists on the island, if we have the opportunity to do whale watching, oh, these okay. tourists will contribute to the economy of Seba. So it'd be possible to go with the tourists to watch a whale. Exactly, correct. But we still need to know which ones are there. Okay, so you still need more. That's why you are trying to uh, acquire all the information that you're needing. Yes. Okay, very nice. Yes. <laughs>how are you doing good how are you doing i'm all right <laughs> so can you explain to me uh why the, the tent reef project started when it started i was created because of this project that we're standing on to know yeah we wanted to build a commercial building mm -hmm. and fisherman complex a new one okay bigger than what was here before so we demolished the existing one because it was smaller yeah and we wanted to create something good and big for the fishermen and also the dive shops. Okay. So in order to do that project, what we're seeing here now, we had to do a lot of excavation. Yeah. And the materials excavated is the type that you see there. It's a reddish, brownish type of material. Yeah. Nothing grows in it. It's just like dead material. Uh -huh. But we had nowhere else to put the material besides close by, which is on the road, the ground road to tent. Big. So we stored it there for a time being, mm -hmm. but we knew that we had a danger, so to say, because of the tent reef. Uh -huh. If waves, big waves came ashore because of hurricanes uh -huh. or severe storms, uh -huh. it would take the ground out and deposit it in the sea. Yes. And most probably by tent reef. Uh -huh. And that would damage the reef. Uh -huh. And then the dive place would be destroyed. And then, you know, it's a very famous dive area. Look, area. <laughs>